Today we'll be talking about the permanent maxillary lateral incisors. The maxillary lateral incisor is the tooth which is second from the midline in the maxillary arch. This is the maxillary right lateral incisor and this is the maxillary left lateral incisor. According to the universal numbering system, this is tooth number 7 and this is tooth number 10. Before starting off, I wanted to compare the maxillary lateral incisor with the maxillary central incisor. Here the one on the right side is the maxillary lateral incisor and you can clearly see that it is smaller than the maxillary central incisor in all aspects. Now let's come to the labial aspect. You can see that the labial aspect is almost identical to the one of the maxillary central incisor. The mesoincisal angle is more rounded and the distal incisal angle as well is more rounded. As a result of which, the incisal outline is not straight. The incisal outline may also contain mammalons which are usually two in number. The cervical margin curves evenly towards the root apex. The labial aspect also contains developmental depressions and imbrication lines just like the maxillary central incisor. The maxillary lateral incisor is generally more convex both incisor cervically and mesiodistally when compared with the maxillary central incisor. The height of contour is located in the cervical third. Even though the mesoincisal angle is more rounded when compared with the mesoincisal angle of the maxillary central incisor, it is still less rounded than the distoincisal angle of the maxillary lateral incisor. So you can clearly distinguish the mesial side from the distal side. Now let's come to the lingual aspect. The lingual fossa is generally more deeper and the cingulum is more prominent when compared with the maxillary central incisor. The distal outline the mesial outline and the incisal outline are the same as that of the maxillary central incisor. The cervical margin curves towards the apex and it is generally towards the distal side. Here you can see the lingual gingival fissure and I'll show you the lingual gingival groove and pit with the help of a diagram. Both of these are a common finding in the maxillary lateral incisor. The height of contour is located in the cervical third. Here in this diagram, this is the lingual gingival fissure. This is the lingual gingival groove and this is the lingual pit. The lingual pit is a potential site for caries. Coming to the mesial aspect, it is also triangular in shape and it is very similar to that of the maxillary central incisor but with less in dimensions. The cervical margin is less curved and the contact area is similar in shape but it is located near the junction of the incisal and middle thirds. The distal aspect is more convex and smaller than the mesial aspect. The cervical line is less curved. The contact area is smaller and is located more cervically near the junction of the incisal and middle thirds. The incisal aspect of maxillary lateral incisor is similar to the maxillary central incisor except in the maxillary lateral incisor the cingulum is more prominent and the labial aspect is more convex. The root is single and it is longer than the crown but it is still shorter than the root of the maxillary central incisor. The apex is less rounded and it is deflected towards the distal side. Here you can see that the root is wider labiolingually than it is mesiodistally. The cervical and the mid root cross section both present an ovoid shape which is wider labiolingually than it is mesiodistally. Now let's come to the variations and anomalies. In the maxillary lateral incisors, the incisal portion of the cingulum may exhibit a tubercle. The lingual gingival fissure may extend all the way onto the root surface. Distorted crowns and unusual root curvatures are also commonly seen. Peg lateral is the anomalous condition in which the crown is small and peg shaped. This is due to the lack of development of the mesial and distal portions of the crown. The maxillary lateral incisors may also be congenitally missing. This is called agenesis and this is because the tooth buds do not form. Dens and denti is a developmental aberrancy. In this, at the lingual pit, the enamel and dentine become invaginated in the tooth's pulp cavity, as a result of which the lingual pit becomes a site of entrance. In this diagram, you can see that this is a peg-shaped crown. 